drive and when you spin the front shaft the uh, it spins this internal spline which which connects to here and spins the input shaft of the NP205 so this has two speeds if you're in the middle it free wheels and if you're all the way back then you go into low gear and if you're all the way forward it goes into high gear so we're hearing a grinding noise, which sounds like we're hanging in neutral. But when we put this together and we look at our detents, it looks like everything is properly lined up. So mm. we're gonna put it together one more time and double check. But when we put this together and we look at our detents, it looks like everything is properly lined up. Do it again. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna move this thing just a hair. All right, try it now. Nothing. Should I put it back together? I want to put it together tonight. And now we're about to power this up. So here we go. folks so after a very long night and morning we had to remove the motor and transfer case from the truck because we heard some grinding and we're not sure where it's coming from we thought it was this clutch ring that goes between the high and the uh, low gear I guess that's the high gear up front this is the low in the rear we thought that's what it was like it wasn't quite uh, catching or engaging on these teeth but that wasn't the case we're gonna put this back together and uh, break down this uh, connection between the motor in the transfer case and we're hoping that it's probably a spacing issue because these are all shims 
and we're hoping that maybe it was shimmed a little too, too far. So inside this shaft is a seal. What I want to do is I want to make sure that this end doesn't hit that seal when this is all the way in. So I'm going to get a locking collar that goes on here so that the front edge of the locking collar will hit the front edge of this and prevent it from going in too deep. I'm going to bolt this to here. I'm going to bolt, bolt the plate on here and put the shaft on this side and determine exactly where this stops in relation to this. So one day Bill and I were at the shop and uh, we've got them taken apart, the Tesla motor and the transfer case, they're sitting on the table. Uh, we've broken out micrometers and computers and we're sending emails, making phone calls, we're doing math, we're bouncing ideas back and forth with, with each other of why these two parts can't play in the sandbox together. In walks one of Bill's friends, he came to pay us a visit, his name's Gerald Swanson. Picture one of those seasoned, if you will, mechanics that could listen to your car run for 10 seconds and be like, Oh, that's your problem there. You need a math sensor. He's seen cars go from carburetor to fuel injection. Seen a few more sunsets than Bill and I. The guy knows what he's doing. We're telling him, you know, hey man, this thing's got us stumped. We've tried everything we can, and every time we hit the throttle, it makes one of those noises like, Vroom! you know, we know that some gears are pretty much rubbing or stripping, but we've test fit everything. We've press fit everything. We've sent things back to the manufacturer. No one can figure this out. So while we're talking, Gerald is looking at the table, right? He's looking at the parts on the table. Now, we're going to pretend for uh, uh, demonstration purposes that we're at the shop, but we're not. We're in my basement in my Hobby Lobby. This isn't Tesla parts. This is a, an old CVT Jayco transmission that I've taken apart that I'm rebuilding. Daryl looks at the part at the table while we're talking. And he goes, well, that's your problem right there. So Bill and I are like, where? He goes, Right there. That's a GM input shaft, isn't it? And we go, well, we're not sure, but you know, so what if it is? And then he goes, well, it's a forged output shaft, isn't it? And we go, well, it is the original one out of the truck, you know, and we did modify the other end so that it could slide over the Tesla spline and then go into the input shaft, which is attached to the Magnum drum on the transfer case. And he goes, yeah, most likely that's your problem. And so Bill and I are scratching our heads. We're like, well, how could it be a problem? What if it is GM and what, is, what if it is for them? And it, he goes, well, GM's 32 teeth. And that year four that you have is 31 teeth. And we go, well, if it, one's 32 teeth and one's 31 te teeth, it wouldn't match up. It, it wouldn't even fit. He goes, well, if it wore out, it would. So Bill and I are like, can't be wore out because you know it's a very snug fit and that's when gerald goes well you think it's a snug fit till you put a load on it but the thing is we haven't even put a load on it it was it's been up in the air he goes well if you say that that tesla motor there has got instant instant torque then the second you hit that throttle it's gonna start spinning faster than that input shaft is gonna want to spin and then that's your load right there put this spline inside the input shaft and put some resistance on that Grab your pair of vice grips and try and spin that shaft and see what happens. We put it on the table, and that's when this happened. All right, so on this side, you're putting a block in with a bolt, suspending it to keep it from spinning, the, the, the output shaft from spinning. And then you're gonna spin the input shaft. Look at that. That's it. So what happened was this, this female spline was wore out enough that the 31 spline would fit into it and it felt like a snug fit. But it actually but was. But it's actually a 32 spline. So this will not fit in a 32 spline that's not wore out because there's only 10 thousandths difference between the outside diameter of this and the outside diameter of a Chevy spline. So if these were not wore out, this would not fit in it. Go 
right. So this is the spline out of the transfer case. This is the spline that we were using. You see that it fits in. The GM spline fits in. But this is a GM yoke. You can see that it goes in there. And the Ford. But the Ford will not. Will not go in because it's not worn out. Yeah. Like this these one splines worn are worn out, which allows the 31 spline Ford to fit in it. Appears to fit in it. Yeah, but it won't go in one that's not wore out. Okay. So what we're doing is we're replacing this part and then we're gonna make a new shaft with the correct 32 spline Chevrolet so that you, fit. you can see that this has too much. Yeah, you can hear the play in it because the spine teeth are worn out on the yeah. inside, the female end. See how I can wiggle it back and forth? Yeah. Okay. On this one, you cannot. There's no play in it. Gotcha. So the reason we can't reuse this is because it's got too much play in it and it'll slap in the, when the motor runs. Pretty interesting, huh? Now, I'm going to put the input shaft and the output spline both on the screen side by side. You guys count the teeth on both units and see what you come up with.